أعوذ بالله السميع العليم من شر الشيطان اللعين الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله الذي لا يغلب ملحته القائلون ولا يحصي نعماءه العادون والصلاة والسلام على البشير والنذير وسراج المنير أبي القاسم محمد وعلى آله الطيبين الطاهرين وأصحابه الغر الميامين Respected brothers and sisters, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Um, in this short span of time, inshallah, I never thought I was going to speak for 10 minutes or so. I thought I was going to speak for 25 minutes. So what I'll do is that um, I'm going to just summarize it and uh, explain what I'm talking about. And then hopefully if I don't finish, I'll speak another time. And then inshallah concluded. Uh, the topic of discussion for today is about the adherence or the importance of adhering to the Holy Quran. Why is it so important for us to adhere to the Holy Quran? It is of great importance. Scripture, books of each and every single religion is the what? Is the centerpiece or is the root of that religion. Without that scripture of that particular religion, there is no religion. The religion itself deduces laws, deduces understanding, deduces doctrine from the scripture itself. Meaning for an example, when we are talking about the religion of Islam, it has to take each and every single thing from the Holy Quran. Christianity takes from the New Testament and the Old Testament. Judaism takes from the Old Testament. Hinduism takes from the Vedas. Different types of religion takes from scriptures. But now why is it so important or what makes the Holy Quran to be different to other scriptures? What makes the Quran so special? The Holy Quran is special because of four characteristics. Of course, there are many other characteristics of the Holy Quran. But for me, I'm just going to focus on these four. And these four characteristics of the Holy Quran do what? Explain why it is important for us to adhere to the Holy Quran. Number one, number one, the Holy Quran has the characteristic and the nature of rationality, the characteristic of intelligence, the characteristic of reasoning and intellectualism. That is the Holy Quran, number one. Number two, it is the miraculous nature of the Holy Quran. The miraculous nature of the Holy Quran. Number three, it is the timeless nature of the Holy Quran. And number four, it is the multidimensionalism of the Holy Quran. But number one, let us start with the rationality or the reasoning of the Holy Quran. When we say that the Holy Quran is a rational scripture, what do we mean? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes it very clear in the Holy Quran, in Surah Yusuf, verse number two, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says what? Inna anzalnahu Qur'anan arabiyan la'allakum ta'aqilun. Surely we have revealed the Holy Quran in a clear and a manifest manner. Why? So that you must ponder. La'allakum ta'aqilun. So that you must use your rationality. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Zuhruf, verse number three, Allah says what? Inna, he repeats it. Ja'alnahu Qur'anan Arabiyan la'allakum ta'aqilu. So that you must ponder. The Holy Quran is not a mantara scripture like all other scriptures. Quran is a scripture of intellectualism. Because Allah knows that what? The intellect is the nature of a human being. This is what makes us different to the animals and other creatures. That is number one. And that is why, for an example, when you go to other verses of the Holy Quran, Allah says what? In Surah al sad verse number 29, Allah says what? Kitabun anzalnahu mubarakun liyadabbaru ayate. Allah says, the Quran that we have revealed to you is a blessed scripture. But for what? So that you must ponder on its verses. 
It's putting on the Holy Quran. In some religions and in some scriptures, they don't encourage you to ponder on their scriptures. In fact, when you ponder on the scriptures immediately, you're in trouble. When you ask, for an example, if Jesus died on the cross for my sins, how did Jesus die for my sins when I was not even there at that time? They say, no, don't ask such questions. Quran does not say that. Islam does not teach us that. Islam says question. Islam says reason. Islam says ponder. But in some religions they tell you, no, if you want to understand the word of God, you must give yourself to Jesus and then you will acquire salvation. No, that's not Islam. Islam does not work like that. Islam is a religion of rationality. And that is why I researched in the Holy Quran and I, fought, I found in four places of the Holy Quran, four places, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, قُلْ هَاتُوا بُرْهَانَكُمْ إِن كُنْتُمْ صَادِقِينَ In four places of the Holy Quran. Bring your proof if you are of the truthful. Bring your proof if you are of the truth. In four places of the Quran, Allah constantly tells us that if you want to understand Islam, if you want to understand life, if you want to understand anything, you have to bring proof for it. You can't just say that, no, this is what Islam says. This is what religion says. No, you have to produce proof, Habibi. Where's your proof? For whatever that you practice, for whatever that you believe, where's your proof for it? Islam is a religion of that's number one. Number two, we said what? We said that the Holy Quran is a miraculous scripture. Before we go into the miracles of the Holy Quran, we first have to understand what is this word miraculous or miracle? Because many a times this word is taken out of context. Many a times. To the extent that you find that certain individuals say that they do miracles. They claim that they do miracles. <coughs> and how do they do miracles? Well, they say, for an example, there was one guy who said he went to heaven and he took a photo in heaven, a selfie. <laughs> he said he took a selfie when he was in Jannah, right? And he took a selfie with Jesus and he brought it back and they said he was selling the picture for 5,000 rands. That's South Africa for you. And then there is another one who also, so I saw also the miracle, and I was like, okay, then that means it's an advertisement for, for Apple. He says he took a picture of a child in the spirit world. How? Because he used an iPad, and only when you look at the video, he, he, instead of taking the picture, he goes to the display of the gallery, and then it shows the picture of the child. And then people say that, no, this person did a miracle. And many other such examples of people who claim that they do miracles. Or some guy puts his hand on another guy, on another congregant, and the guy starts dancing like Michael Jackson or MC Hammer or Babes Wood Doom, whatever. So by merely doing that and they say that, no, that's a miracle. That's not a miracle. What is the meaning of a miracle in Islam? When we say this is a miracle, what are we talking about? A miracle. And in fact, in some dic dictionary definitions, they explain a miracle to mean something that is astounding. Something that is, you know, amazing. <coughs> a phenomenon. Awesome. <coughs> that is the meaning of a miracle according to the English dictionary. But however, according to Islam, that's not the meaning of a miracle. A miracle, in Arabic, what they call mu'ajiza, comes from the word ajz. Ajz means what? Means inability. When you do a mu'ajiza in Arabic, they say you have the power to make others to be unable to do so. That is the meaning of a miracle. Not to do something amazing. Everybody can do something amazing, you know. Everybody can do something amazing. Look at how good looking I look. That's amazing. So that means I'm a miracle? No. You know. But the meaning of a miracle is that you should do something that others are unable to do. That's the meaning of a miracle. When somebody, inshallah, when you interact with certain individuals and they say, no, my pastor, he does miracles. If he says so, just say, okay, are you able, is your pastor able to split the oceans? Why doesn't your pastor split the oceans? That's a miracle. And Nabi Musa, 
Is your pastor able to bring people who are dead to life? It's the miracle of Isa alayhi salam. Why doesn't your pastor do that? That's a miracle. A miracle is something, is doing something that others cannot, cannot do. And that is why the Holy Quran constantly does what? Says what? فَأْتُوا بِسُورَةٍ مِنْ مِثْلِهِ إِنْ كُنْتُمْ صَادِقٍ وَلْعُوا شُهَدَاءَكُمْ مِنْ دُونِ اللَّهِ إِنْ كُنْتُمْ صَادِقٍ Allah constantly challenges Muslimi, Mu'mineen, and even Kufa, that if ever you claim that you are able to produce something that is the same of the Holy Quran, okay, then produce proof. No problem. Produce another surah like the Holy Quran. Allah is challenging you. That's a miracle. A miracle is challenging. To say that, if you are able to do the same thing, produce the same thing, or even better than that. Number three, my time is almost up, is the timeless nature of the Holy Quran. We said that the Holy Quran is timeless. What do we mean that the Holy Quran is timeless? Because we find that there are certain people who say that, no, the Holy Quran is not timeless. Why? Because the Holy Quran is speaking about Nabiullah Musa and Nabiullah, and Nabiullah Isa and all those old fairy tales, you know, and therefore we don't. And therefore they say that, no, the Holy Quran is not timeless. No, the Holy Quran is timeless. And there is no scripture more timeless than the Holy Quran. And I will prove this. You know, I was researching about the building of the pyramids. And many scholars were thinking that the pyramids are not mentioned in the Holy Quran. Apparently it is mentioned in the Holy Quran. I saw a very interesting verse of the Holy Quran. Where Fir'aun, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about Fir'aun, that Fir'aun is telling Haman. He says, فَوْقِدْ لِي يَا هَامَانُ مِنْ عَلَى الطِّينِ فَجَعَلْ لِي صَرْحًا لَعَلْ لِي أَطَّلِعُ إِلَى إِلَهِ مُوسَى He says, O oh, Haman, build for me. In fact, he does not say build for me. In another verse, yes, he says build for me. But in this verse of the Holy Quran, he says what? He says, burn for me the soil and build for me a large building, a lofty building. A professor by the name of Joseph Davidovitz, who was a French scholar and a French archaeologist, he discovered that the, uh, that the pyramids were not built by what? By rocks and stones that were taken from the mountains. All along, scientists were of that impression. He was the one who discovered that no, actually, what they did, the Egyptians, they took large, uh, what is it, soil, and they burnt it. 900 degrees, approximately. And then after that, they made, they made bricks. That's how they built the pyramids. The Holy Quran came and was explaining it more accurately than any other scripture. That's timelessness. That is the essence of being timeless. For an example, another verse of the Holy Quran that says, Today, when Allah addresses Fir'aun, He says, Oh Fir'aun, today we will rescue you with your body. When He was about to drown, We will rescue you with your body so that you must become a sign for those who come after you. Some of you have heard of a man called Dr. Maurice Bokale. Maurice Bokale discovered that what? That the body of Fir'aun, after centuries in 1898, the body of what? Of Fir'aun was discovered and it was still intact and it was left in the ocean. In the Bible, the Bible does not mention that Fir'aun was in the ocean. He did not drown, according to the Bible. That is the essence of being timeless. So that you must become a sign for those that come after you. The Quran says. Those that come after you. So meaning centuries after that, the Holy Quran was predicting that the body of Fir'aun will be discovered. That is the timeless nature of the Holy Quran. Inshallah, we pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grants us the tawfiq to understand his holy book. We pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cures everybody who is in this holy mosque. We pray that, we pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala helps all the brothers and sisters who are having financial difficulties, who are having difficulties at work, difficulties with children, <coughs> difficulties in their marriages, and difficulties in the community. We pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also unites all the Muslims all over around the world. 
pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes the Muslims all over around the world to be victorious against the enemies of Islam. And Allah wa malaikatahu yusalluna ala zalih, ya ayyuhal ladina amanu sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima.